Okay, here we go, Celeste. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our Drop the Live Facebook uh, Thursday, Thursday morning edition. I am Laura Hunter, and here with us, Celeste Gagnon today. And um, it's been an adventure getting here today. I uh, we have bad internet, so I'm now sitting on the end of my teeter-totter in the arena. So if no one comes in and steps on the other end, we'll be able to get through this. So anyway, we are here today to ask that question, do you have a pub dog? And uh, so uh, meaning do, I'm just gonna tilt my camera a little bit, meaning do you have a dog? that you can take out into the world to pubs or outdoor patios or stores or any outdoor events. So it's not just limited to pubs. Um, and Celeste, I think we've been interested in this question for quite a while. And I think it got triggered because uh, I think the fall before COVID, I, had, I was on a trip to England. Mm -hmm. And being a dog person, I missed a lot of what was going on, but I did notice all of the dogs in England. And it was truly amazing. Dogs were everywhere. They were in pubs, they were in stores, they were in fancy restaurants. We went to some fancy restaurants and there were dogs just lying quietly under the table. Uh, and so it was definitely something that we don't see here. Um, I'm not sure what the difference is between our dogs here in North America and dogs in England. I can only guess that people take them out everywhere from the time they get them and dogs just assimilate being out in the world. I'm not quite sure, but there, I didn't see one dog that was really reactive. I didn't see dogs that cared about meeting other people and other dogs. They just hung out with their owners and were very, very calm. So, um, you know, what we would like to do is help people get their dogs out in the world like that, because I think too many people here um, tend to leave their dogs at home. Um, and I, I'm not even sure that we don't do that for sure, um, because I live on a farm and we just don't get out that much. Um, I think during COVID, nobody got their dogs out, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, and I also think too that, um, well, we know this because of all the people that are coming to the games program right now that, um, what was I gonna say? That people tend to, um, especially during COVID again, teach their dogs the skills at home. And even coming to training class, those become the two locations where the dogs are become really proficient at what we need them to be. But we don't generalize enough to the rest of the world. And so when they do go out into the big wide world, it's just overwhelming that our dogs just get totally overexcited. I, I don't know. Yeah. What do you think? yeah. Well, I think it's also overwhelming for people who aren't sure how to go about doing that. Yeah. Bringing them yeah. up to the world. So they just don't. Yeah, exactly. It, it, mm -hmm. it, yeah, it's like a downward spiral. Yeah. Because they get too excited and nobody knows how to deal with it. Then the dogs get left at home. And because the dogs get left at home, they get too excited when they go out. Exactly. It is this downward spiral. So anyway, we're here today to um, offer some <coughs> practical tips and suggestions that you can, that hopefully will help people get their dogs out more successfully. And as well, we're going to talk about a new program we have for that. So anyway, um, let's start off with some questions that everybody should ask themselves. So I'm going to ask you, Celeste, you're my person here. Um, do you have the right dog? Um, if you look at the dog in front of you, is this a dog? that you think could be useful going out to a patio or to a pub. So um, you have two dogs. You have two I have dogs. two. Mm -hmm. I think, <clears throat> you know, it's funny because I was at a patio yesterday mm -hmm. and, and Andrew and I had this conversation and there were no other dogs there that, at that time. So I was like, Penny could handle this. Yeah. But if there was a dog there, she wouldn't, I would never bring her. And so I wouldn't bring her because I couldn't risk that, right? That's Gimli, right. Gimli could do it, um, but I'd have to put some work in first. Oh, perfect answer. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, um, from my own, um, from my dogs, um, Rosie could do it. Um, yeah. Rosie gets exposed to all sorts of 
exciting events here in the classes. Um, mm -hmm. I do um, get her, you know, she was a, the demo dog down in Duncan too. She's been out a lot at, um, you know, info fairs and stuff. And she is a dog that nothing, nothing bothers her. Nothing bothers her. In fact, um, we do know that I took her um, to the pub next door to Doggy Den. I think that was two years ago. Mm -hmm. um, didn't didn't quite do it in the way that we're going to help people do it. Um, I think he just took her in and let go. And <laughs> I was horrified. He said she just met everybody at the door and then she went around and worked the tables. And I went, okay, that's great. <laughs> um, but there, I don't think there's a lot of Rosies. And I, I've got two dogs and I know that Annie could possibly do it, but she'd be like Gimli. She would need a lot of work. And I think she yeah. would, str I think she would stress. Um, <laughs> okay. And Maddie, forget it. Um, yeah. Absolutely, no way on the planet would I take Maddie because she's reactive to other dogs and she's nervous about people. So okay. I could maybe have some nervous about people, but there's no way I'm taking a reactive dog to an outdoor event. No, so, exactly. Yeah. So, so you know, we all have to look at you know, we the last couple of weeks we've been talking about genetics and evolution and how they ingrain these behaviors in our dogs. So you do have to look at the dog that's in front of you and and make sure because as you said celeste we can always put work into it yeah you could work Emily, i could work annie and you know it we probably get the right road but there are just some dogs that it just wouldn't be kind to them to take them to and that. that's yeah and that's that's the perfect way of saying it like you could yeah. do it but why should you do it that's right so which yeah. leads us to question two is this something your dog will like <laughs> so uh no um it, it's interesting because we do have um backyard get-togethers here now that we can and we leave maddie in the kitchen and she's in the kitchen and there's a blanket across the gate and she's really happy and my guests are always saying oh that poor dog she never gets out of the house she gets out of the house all the time but not when we have company and she doesn't want to have anything to do with the company so yeah you know it's it isn't it wouldn't be a kind thing for me to ask her to do that and the third question is, why are you taking your dog? Um, so this goes to owner motive. Um, are you taking them because you have, you, you want to include them in your life? Um, I know my husband's answer to that would be a big no. We have three dogs. We just like to go places by ourselves. We don't want to talk <laughs> with us at all. <laughs> I, I once suggested uh, renting an RV and going on a holiday, and he was not a big fan of taking three dogs, uh, uh, three barking dogs, on, you know, uh, in an RV on a holiday. Um, so, you know, if you've got one dog, though, and you want to just be able to take them everywhere, the more opportunity to be with you out in the world, that's fantastic. Um, lots of enrichment for them out in the world, you know, new experiences. That's a great thing, to, you know, to stimulate them and, um, and they're with you. Um, you know, are you happy to help them have a good experience? Absolutely. Will you do what it takes to make it work? Absolutely. Take out. Um, my fourth question would be, um, are you taking your dog out in the world because you want everybody to see what a great dog they are and you want to show them off? Um, not a good reason, not a good reason. And um, I wouldn't think I had to include that in this um, in this presentation, but I was also at the, our restaurant um, last week. It, it's Slab Town because we're going to tell everybody about Slab Town because <laughs> um, Slab Town is a good place to take a dog. Um, and there were people there who wanted. It was clear that they wanted everybody to see how great their dog was. They had their dog out in the field in front of us doing obedience tricks um, off leash, and somebody also. Um, ran their dog out in the middle of the field and took it off leash because there was something going on. She, they wanted everybody to see their dog do it as well. So no, it's not the place to show off your dog's skills. That's called collision or fun runs or something else. Um, if you want to show them off, it's not the place because other people don't care about your dog. They just want to go for a nice meal, you know, unless you're us and you stare at everybody's dog. So no reason. <laughs> yeah, we're the exception. Yes, yes. So as we said, um, you know, most dogs, you can work with them, you can teach them skills, um, we can get them to the point where they could go have a pretty good time and be socially acceptable yeah. dogs in that situation. But you do have to, I really think yeah, I just, I don't have a lot of necessary skills 
that dogs need to have in order to to go to these places successfully. So we're going to start off with um, why you should not take your dog. It's sort of a negative thing, but but I think uh, this is the way I wrote it up. So don't take your dog if they are not social. And by social, I mean if they are not comfortable with other dogs and other people. Um, if they aren't able to see them without being nervous or without desperately wanting to go and meet them. So we run a program called Walks at Work and in Walks at Work, it's about dogs that lunge and bark out in the world and um, look um, like they are overexcited or aggressive. And usually they're either fearful, so they're trying to send the other dog away or they're excited and they need to get to the other dog because they're super social. So what the dog that you want to be able to take to the, the patio is one that has learned that, yeah, there's other people i'm okay with that i'm just going to hang out under the table and i know um you and i were talking earlier this morning we said well maybe we shouldn't take a fearful dog to the pub but i'm rethinking that in that um if your dog is not um loudly fearful and you have the right situation there for your dog where they're with you under the table and um, you know they're happy because they're under the table and they don't have to meet other dogs, it might work, it might work. We have fearful dogs come to our classes. As long as dogs yeah. have a distance, they're, <clears throat> yeah. okay. they're okay. Yeah, I was gonna say, you have to have the right circumstances and you'd have to be prepared yeah. to leave <laughs> if you yeah, need to. Exactly, exactly. And, <laughs> yeah. I, and I think, it could probably work if your dog was maybe fearful or nervous about other dogs because we can space the dogs out. You can get distance, you can always get up and move. But I think if they're fearful mm. people, we are not, thus no one should go there because no. if your waitress, if your server, sorry, if your server approaches the table with a plate of food, she doesn't want to get bitten in the ankle. Yeah, um, no, so I agree. Definitely if they are people nervous or people fearful, it is not a place to be for these dogs. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, you shouldn't take your dog to a place, um, to patios or pubs or anywhere out in the world, unless you have some sort of control over them. And I'm not talking necessarily physical control. Um, but I am talking about, do you have a dog that can, you know, that you can keep with you on a loose leash? Do you have a dog that can stay with you? A dog that's not going to um, suddenly dart ahead to the end of the leash and start dragging it through. Um, the first time we were there, we were there for dinner at Slab Town. And um, a couple of people, two people were in with dogs. And um, to get to their tables, they had to go past the door to the kitchen where the, obviously the servers were coming out with food and both dogs were right at the end of their leashes dragging the owners. The owners couldn't have stopped them too. And I, I was sitting there looking and thinking, oh my God, if some poor server walks out the door right now with a tray of food, it, it's, it, they're going down, they're going yeah. down. So, you know, for the sake of the, the staff safety, you do need, to, and for everybody's safety, you do need to, to keep your dogs under control. So, you know, I've compiled, so uh, let me ask you, Celeste, let me put you on the spot. <laughs> what skills would you think you need to teach Gimli in order to make his business successful to a pub, or to make him a safe dog at a pub? I'll see what else I can add to that. Oh my goodness, I would need to work on our loose leash walking in a distracting area. Absolutely. We can do it in a non-distracting area, but I haven't tested him there. Yeah. Um, he would need to learn duration on a mat because I am all for- Big time. Big sitting, time. yeah. Yes. And, and I think, I don't think he would necessarily just sit under a table. I think he would need something to sit on to know that that's where he's supposed to be. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think those would be the two big ones for him because he's not barky and he's not hes not one that wants to visit other dogs. No. But no. he would want to see people, so I need to work on that as well. People approaching and him ignoring them. That's right, that's right. Which, yeah. we could, which and I totally agree, Matt work yeah. because it gives the dog a definite boundary. We know that, that's yeah. much better. Actually, in the picture that you we posted for the address, 
that was a little that was a five month old border Aussie and he mm. was on a blanket because she had done some work with him on a blanket and she was feeding yeah. him. Um, I added a couple more to that. We, we also in our games program, we teach um, dogs a cue. So when they look at people, um, they then turn and look back at us. So they yes. so they learn to ignore people. Um, I thought maybe, as you said, duration behaviors as well. If you, you know, you're wanting to leave or if you're wanting to get up and move somewhere and you have to wait or you're paying your bill at the cash on the way out, a dog who can stay beside you or stay between your feet. Um, yeah. we, we teach that in the program, teach place. Yeah. And then I thought of one more, which would be a leave it, because um, I was thinking, what if your server was walking by and a French fry fell off the tray? Oh. Or somebody at the next, <laughs> or someone at the next table dropped a French fry at their table. Yeah, good point. Leave it might be one of the big ones that we'd have to teach. I never thought of that. Um, yeah, I don't know that's true. I, I think that just popped into my mind because something fell in in my kitchen this morning and <laughs> on a truck. So uh, definitely, we we would add a leave it into that. So th there's a fair number of skills. None of them are difficult to teach, and all of them are just skills that I think any dog in the world should have. To go yes. Anywhere. So nothing, nothing huge or unique or intricate that you have to teach your dog in order to have a successful time. But the secret is to generalize the skills. So teach the dogs the skills at home, but don't think you're going to put them in the car and drive them to a patio and have them, you know, maintain those skills at a patio for two hours under a table. Right. So what you want to do is work up in really small increments. So take them out on your walk and take them out in the street and maybe take them, in my case, my dogs grew up, I might have to eventually take them to town, you know, work them at a distance from distractions and then work up very gradually to more crowded locations. Because I think crowds could be a big influence on it as well. And most yeah. patios are pretty crowded these days. So the level of distraction at a patio, you know, level of distraction Direction of like a one level at a patio is like 500. So yeah. you definitely need to work up to that. And I think everybody needs to actually go ahead and scout out locations before you take your dog. Yes, sure. don't don't assume that dogs are allowed. <laughs> no, <either. laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah. Good one, right? Yeah. Good one. Um, yeah. Um, but uh, like we were at um, our local uh, two weeks ago, we wanted to sit out. We'd never been, we hadn't been on the new deck and we wanted to hear them sing. There's another one. Entertainment could be a little distracting for your dog too. Um, but anyway, um, there's a limited number of patio umbrellas out there. So I know at the next table, there were two women that had a gold and it was sitting in the sun. Mm -hmm. There's nowhere it could go to get out mm -hmm. from under the table or to get out from the sun the table wasn't big enough so you definitely want to make sure it has shade um it has space that it's not too crowded and not too busy because some places are super busy and people are going past those tables all the time coming and going um as you said do they actually welcome dogs a phone call ahead would be a good idea um and here's what i thought of um do they have a place for your dog to go pee and poo, not necessarily the restaurant or the patio, but is there a place where you can take your dog to go pee and poo that's far enough away from people who are sitting, eating and drinking? And yeah, you can do, that's a you great can do one. It, you can do it subtly, um, yeah. you know, because, um, you know, I've seen dogs when they've got to go, they got to go. And we do not want that to happen. <laughs> no, no, that's a really good point. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> While you're eating. Oh, see, I think of all these gross things. <laughs> yeah, no, but that's a good, it's an important one. Yeah, it is, it is, yeah. it is. Um, okay, so Celeste, I'm gonna put you on the spot again. This is so okay. much fun. I didn't tell you I'm doing this. <laughs> no, you didn't, this is this is unprepared. <laughs> I know, so we're getting away on this, but I got your back, so don't worry. Um, <laughs> what would you take? Oh, I would take a mat or a blanket or something. Um, a shorter leash. <laughs> yes. Oh, would, no extend the leashes. Yeah. Please. No extend. Or leashes. yeah, and I wouldn't. I wouldn't bring my my fifteen footer either. Um, no. Uh, probably a, a dish for water. Mm hmm. Um, I don't know. Maybe a toy or something for them to chew on. 
Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't bring a squeaky thing because that would be annoying for everybody else. But <laughs> I've heard. I've heard your dog with her squeaky thing. Well, <laughs> I think those are really, squeaky thing. I, I think it's cute, and it would actually be more acceptable than it barked frantically all the time. That's um, true. It would get on people's nerves. I think. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I I had mixed feelings about that. I put that on my list too. You have the same list as I do. Yes. I would probably bring water as well because I wouldn't want to bother them asking for water all the time. But I'm just a wimp, um, so I would. Probably well, I just wouldn't want to assume. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I know, and I have an, There's a couple of reasons to bring your own water in your own bowl. Um, I know that um, a couple of places put them out for people, but there's yeah. so much there's so much chemical going around right now. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah, and 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 papillomavirus. That yeah. Um, that's to me in one reason. Number two reasons you want to be trekking your dog around all the tables all the time to get to the water, you know, and the and the water's been staying there for a while, so it might not be cold anyway. And I have a dog that's now trained me to hold a bowl for her to drink out of all the time. So I have to bring mine anyway. But, you know, I was wondering about the tasty thing to chew. Like, I thought, okay, should we bring something for them to chew on and give them something to do? I think you'd have to look at the situation because yeah. if your dog was in a spot where there were a lot of dogs had to walk by to get to their table, I'm they not necessarily sure that I want my dog chewing yeah. something good under the table because that could be a big problem. But again, you know, at Slab Town, they've got those picnic benches out on the field. And they're, I think those are more for people. I don't know. Maybe those are more for people who have dogs that need to be further away. Maybe that's what that. I think out there it would be fine because those picnic tables are a fair distance away. I think, um, I mean, I would have my treats regardless. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but I think something to chew, um, I would have it as a backup just in case kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, and, and and as I said, you know, if, if you've got enough space or that yeah, you then don't you can think use another it. another dog's going to end up on the table with your dog yeah. crawling for it, I have that vision video in my head right now. Um, yeah, it's probably not a bad idea, you know, mm -hmm. not a bad idea. But again, depending on the situation. So, yes. Um, yeah. So the next point is that um, please set realistic expectations for your dog because no matter how good your dog is everywhere else, you're walking into a new situation. And any time a dog walks into a new situation, they kind of do lose the ability to focus on, on their owners and, and listen as well as we want them to. So um, definitely that's where taking a lot of food comes in. Um, it was it, it was funny. It was so cute at Slab Town because those two women with the puppy the treat pouch on, and my husband sat down and he, he I guess I brainwashed him. He's looking around. He doesn't notice anything, but he, oh my God, there's a woman wearing a treat pouch. So he was so excited because somebody was wearing a treat pouch. Yeah, because we don't usually see that. Um, yeah. You know, and you know there might be some dogs out in the world who are just happy to go and plunk themselves under a table with their owners, fall asleep, like the ones in England. I didn't see anybody in England using a treat pouch at all, really. But I think for most of us, that's I think we need to work at it in the situation. Oh yeah. I think we yeah. Need to reinforce the dogs for for doing a good job. You know. Yeah. I don't think anybody can expect that in the beginning. Yeah, and you and I both know that we need to reinforce our dogs that are doing a job for us. And I'm not sure they're going to be as really excited and happy to go to that patio in the beginning as we might be. You right. Know? So, um, and, you know, unless you've done massive amounts of work with a boundary or a bed or a mat to lie on, um, think realistically about how long your dog is happy to stay on that. Um, you know, I, I'm pretty sure I could keep Rosie on a mat for most of a visit to, to a patio because mm -hmm. she can, well, she's not too great in class these days, but um, there with me paying attention and, and, you know, engaging with her, she, she could probably do it, but I'm not sure. I, I don't think my other, I don't think my other dog would stay that long. Um, no. you know, so, you know, you're not going to be able to take your dog there 
for the first visit and, and spend three hours. I don't think unless you have an extraordinary dog. Um, Maybe if your dog's like 17 or 18 years old. Yeah, or stuff. <laughs> that's or, or, or that's stuff. all they do. <laughs> yeah, or it's a stuffed dog. Um, you know, I think realistically 30 minutes is probably a good one. You know, I know I know when we talked to those two women with the puppy, they said they were just gonna get there, order a cider, and if they had to chug it and go home, that was fine. You know, they were yeah. there for the dog, which was which was wonderful. And you're not just gonna be able to stick your dog under the table and forget they're there. You're gonna have right. to pay attention, yeah. you know. Um, it's, it's the same here. We tell people, if you don't want to pay attention to your dog, um, when you're going for a walk, just put them on a leash, on a no-pull harness, and expect them to do their own thing. If you want your dog to stay beside you on a loose leash or no leash, you have to pay attention to them. And, yeah. and, and we know that. I know if my dogs are off leash, not that we're going to get a pub, I have to pay attention to them. So I know if I'm going to stick my dog under a table at a pub, I have to acknowledge her existence and, and reinforce and pay attention. So, yes. Yeah. Well, and, and why would you want to bring your dog if you're just going to ignore them completely anyway? Just keep them at home. Well, that's a good question. Um, you know, that goes back to just showing it off, really. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, um, everybody I've seen so far in my experience has been paying quite a bit of attention to their dogs. Um, yeah, for sure. You know, and and um, number one, and I did see this when I was at Slab Town. And as soon as I saw it, my body started to seize up. Your dog doesn't have to meet other dogs. Um, mm. In fact, we discourage that. Uh, we discourage it here because two dogs meeting on leash nose to nose often goes bad, yeah. um, you know, it, and it causes anxiety in the dogs and the dogs can get defensive. We're not going to get into a whole explanation of this, but it often does um, end up in arguments unless you can get your dog away from the other dog, you know, after about two seconds on a loose leash. It yeah. Might and just I think that's, bad. yeah, I think that's the key right there. People can't tell how long is too long and it's always too long. It yeah. always ends up being too long. Yes, and very few people in this world can call their dog or another dog on a loose yeah. So um, I think that everybody should go there with the goal of not having their dog greet another dog. Yeah. Um, you know, even greeting people, um, there's, a, there's a, a couple of points to that. First of all, um, as we said earlier, we really don't want your dog to greet the server whose arms are full of food. And um, we also, um, if, if somebody has a, goes and they have a really cute dog and you know what happens, because heck, we even do it here in the puppy field, you see it. You and I are guilty of this, is we go running up and go, oh my God, I've got to go pet the cute puppy. And we run right up to them and stick our hand out, even though we know we should be doing this. We try not to most of the time. Occasionally we lose it. Um, but it, is, it should always be your dog's choice to greet new people. Um, yeah. And if, if I, I know from my own lack of social skills, if I have to say hi and hug 25 people at the pub, um, I'm going to want to go home. I would go home <laughs> after three, but because I don't deal well with those social interactions, I find them exhausting and eventually I just get fed up. So I think our dogs can feel the same way. Like how many hands do you want to see coming at your head to head? Um, and especially if you're not a really confident dog. So, you know, we try and tell people it's always the dog's choice to go and greet people if they want to. So, um, this is a good one for everybody to know is just if people want to come up and greet your dog, it's your dog's choice. If your dog doesn't want to come out from under the table to greet them, then your dog doesn't have to, you know, yeah. and just explain that to people. People don't understand. You know? No, you have to advocate for your dog. Yeah, everybody thinks that dogs should be the social butterflies of the world. Um, but, you know, they have as many social issues as people do. So um, lastly, respect the facility. And mm -hmm. again, this is something I didn't think that I would have to say, but um, I did see it happen a couple of times in the one visit that we were there. So um, for anybody who doesn't know Slab Town Cider, which is what we've been referring back to many times, 
Um, it is a beautiful place. It's out in the middle of the country. It's on concession sticks just south of Uxbridge, Ontario. And um, they have a huge, huge patio. Patio is really huge. Yeah, it's beautiful. Um, and what is even better is in front of the patio, um, they have this massive field. And that field is, is enormous. Um, like I thought our training field was huge, but it is enormous. And um, you are welcome to take your dogs out on that field. And I did, there were, I saw one little girl out doing obedience with her dog, which was really cute. And she was way out in the field, so she wasn't trying to show off. She just took the dog out there to get something to do. And I thought that was really cool. But then there was somebody else who took their dog out and took the dog off leash. Um, mm -hmm. And nobody got really worried about it because they also were very far away, although distance doesn't always save us. And something happened, I guess um, the owners live way at the back of the property and they had a big, they have a big red fox lab and everybody looked up and, and we saw this big red fox lab sort of slowly just trundling across the field. And it was obvious that he'd come from that direction. So people either assumed, oh, maybe he came from the other farm, in which case they deal with it, or maybe, you know, he, he's the owner's dog. So nobody did anything about it, but there was um, a table where, I won't even, I'm not gonna describe anybody, what day was there anything else? And they saw the Red Fox Lab out in the field and they jumped up and they ran out of the field with their dog and they unhooked their dog to play with it. Oh, gosh. Um, it was only about 30 feet from where we were sitting mm. and two servers showed up with don't do this you know with their hands up in the air please stop right now um and you know nothing happened the doodle didn't go anywhere but if you're working a patio of people yeah with and food. you <laughs> see two dogs off leash um I would be, I would be terrified. Heck, we get nervous when we see dogs off leash when in our training classes that have yeah. just someone's lost leash. Like my heart rate goes up right away because we just don't know how that's going to turn out. So yeah. um, that is not the place where you need to show people, you know, I can play off leash or my dog can be off leash and I can call them back. Um, you know, I've got a dog who probably could grow out in that field off. I would never leave my side, and that's Rosie. But I would never mm -hmm. do it. I would never right. do it because you need to respect the rules. Yes. So I, I spoke to the staff, um, and I asked them um, what were their two big issues. Um, actually, there were three. That was definitely a dog off leash at that facility. Um, and the other, um, uh, what was it? Dogs under, um, they all... Um, the one server, our server went in and sort of in the kitchen and they said the two things that make them most nervous are dogs um, under the tables when people aren't paying attention and they're approaching with food. So they are always worried about the dogs coming out from under the table to greet them and tripping them and having a, basically a food disaster. And yeah. the other one was very similar and it was about dogs growling from under the tables. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that was interesting for me because um, I wouldn't think if you had a dog who would be the kind of dog who growl under a table that you would take them to uh, a place. And, and there's lots of reasons for growling. They could be nervous about people approaching, they could be nervous about dogs approaching, they could be resource guarding people. Like yeah. Location. So um, that's the two big issues that they wanted to pass on. But after this little incident out in the field, they added, please, no dogs off leash. Please, no dogs off leash. So, um, yeah. So anyway, um, is there anything we missed, Celeste? I don't think we have anything else to add. Hopefully we helped everybody think a little bit differently about what needs to happen if you do want to take your dog to places yeah. like that. Well, I, I would just add, like, call ahead and make sure that they allow dogs. Um, yeah, not not every place does. Not every place sure. does. Um, a lot of patio restaurants allow it now. I know indoors, I don't think health code-wise no. you're allowed no. indoors. No, um, absolutely not. Yeah, so it's mostly patio places. But, again, it's by the choice of the owner. So you, you really do need to check it out before you go. Yeah, and, and I think you really need to check out if it is an appropriate place for your dog. Certainly, um, 
Bike has a fantastic place if you were going to take a dog. It is yeah. a really great place to go because there is so much room and they do have that huge green space, whereas a lot of other patios are in more urban areas and it's tough to have, you know, any place else to, to take your dog to give them some relief um, yeah. from, from the situation. Yeah. Um, yeah. Are, are there any comments? Do you have any questions in the comments? At all? Um, I didn't well, one know. was about public health restrictions. So yeah, indoors is, is off limits. Um, yeah. Outdoors, it's by the owner's choice. Um, oh yeah, Susan's saying that sheriff's happier at home. Yes, I yeah. can see. <laughs> yes, you know what, but that. Susan, Penny is happier at home too, I think. I, I mean, I think I could get away with it in some circumstances, but yeah. I, why, why do that? Yeah, Sometimes. and you know what? There's some dogs Susan, that don't need it. Yeah, Susan actually triggered another thought, which is also, um, is that you both have big German shepherds. Yeah. Right? Um, a big dog um, is, pro is not problematic, but logistically, it's tougher with a big it's dog. It's harder. Because they yeah. have to be able to fit them somewhere where no one's going to trip over them. Yeah. Um, you know, we, I have a, uh, a client who takes her dog to our local, but it's, it's like this big. Pocket sized. <laughs> yeah. And now, there, I did see a guy at Slab Town with a Great Dane. He had to choose his table very carefully. Um, yeah. and, and the dog, um, I don't know if the dog ever lay down, but the dog was sitting beside him right up against the table. So yeah. it, depending on his food was his problem, but I think he was being very conscious of finding a place where the servers could get by easily and, and he could keep, you know, people from tripping over his dog. So yeah, that's another factor that I didn't think about. Well, and, your dog. and actually thinking about size, but also breed. I mean, a lot of people are afraid of German Shepherds. Yeah. So is it considerate of the facility and the people around you to bring yeah. a dog that is intimidating to them? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, they don't, they don't know what we know, which is German Shepherds are the biggest- They're big babies. On the, on the planet, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. But you're right, yeah. people, are of, people are afraid of certain breeds. You know, yeah. and, and I guess, you know, that doesn't mean that you have no right to take your dog. Like the, no, the but pick the your game. times, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Like go when it's not crazy busy. Go yeah. when it's, you know, like the off off peak hours and then you can yeah. relax and your dog can relax. And, and I hate to say it, but again, if you have a big dog, they have to be really big. Um, yeah, because you can, you know, you can get away with a little dog pulling on the end of a leash. You just pick it up. It, I can't see yeah. you picking up a German Shepherd if it's pulling her <laughs> Rottweiler on the end of the leash. So you, know, you do have to have really good control over them. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, um, yeah. So any other comments? Is that, that's pretty No, much those it. are the two comments. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah. So um, for anybody who is, just a, our little plug here, for anybody who is <laughs> looking to take their dog out in the world and they aren't sure that their dog has the skills or they know their dog doesn't have the skills, we are starting a new program called Pub Dog. How fun is that? Um, and so it's a six week program. We're gonna run it on probably Sunday mornings. Um, it's gonna start in a couple of weeks if we get enough enrollment. And it's not about, taking your dog to a patio it's going to be all the skills that you need to take your dog anywhere in the world so yeah in hopes that more people can get their dogs out and be um more confident um, mm -hmm. about that and so um <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit different because we're going to do some lessons here at our facility but we're also going to make a point of getting people out to other locations, we're gonna run lessons at other locations as well. Let's get our dogs out on, we'll call them field trips. Yeah. Um, so I can avoid the whole logistical legal thing. We're just gonna take the group out on a field trip and uh, so that our dogs get to um, get to um, generalize those skills out to the world. Because again, I, you know, everybody does really well in, in our six week games programs, but the, the big um, the big stumbling block for a lot of people is how to get them out in the world and, and how to generalize the situation. So we'll be there to coach you in that. And um, we have talked to Slab Town and they have said that we can run our last, our graduating class um, is more than welcome to come and do it at, at their facility, which is a really great facility. We would not take them out. That would be the only um, 
sort of pub patio we go to. Yeah, that would be the to, big. We'd be going to easier locations before that, but that's our, that's our goal to get everybody to Slab Town for the last class. So, if anybody is interested, um, please just um, post um, in the comments section or send me um, an email, Laura at dropthelease.ca, and we'll be putting out more information on our on the Facebook page about it anyway. Um, lots of details and more information. So, if there are no other comments, Celeste, I guess we're good to nope. go. So, hopefully, we've given everybody some good information, and uh, we will be back next week with uh, with some more practical tips. Next week, we're going to talk about some training tips. So, thanks, Celeste, for joining me today. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Have a good week, and we'll see you next Thursday. Take care. <laughs>